I'm Dr. Jack Gilbert, and that is a hospital. Healthcare associated infections and antimicrobial resistance are a major threat to the US healthcare system. We're starting to understand that healthcare system and tackle that threat by examining the hospital, not as a building, but as an ecosystem, a living, breathing environment. The patient room is the epicenter of the healthcare ecosystem. And to measure this environment, we worked with Brent Stevens at the Illinois Institute of Technology. So Brent, can you explain to us how you measured this ecosystem? Sure, so we used a, a variety of off-the-shelf sensors and data loggers to measure a variety of parameters that we thought might have some influence on the indoor microbial communities in the hospital. So that include measured temperature and relative humidity, measuring ventilation rates in the patient rooms, measuring pressurization between the rooms and the hallway, and also measuring uh, occupancy and activity with beam break sensors in the doorways. So what did we find from all of this measurement in the environment? So it turns out that this hospital had really high ventilation rates, which is good for providing fresh, clean air from the outdoors to the indoor environment. It also had very high efficiency filters installed on the HVAC supply. So the patients are getting good clean air uh, delivered to their spaces, which is a good thing. Uh, we also found uh, some interesting things in terms of the environmental conditions. It turns out there were almost no correlations in measured temperatures between all of the rooms that we measured, in large part because occupants and patients were able to control their thermal environment for their thermal comfort. So how can we use this data to build better hospital environments? Well, for one, we noticed that the patients, while they could control their indoor temperatures, they didn't have any control over the indoor relative humidity or a measure of absolute humidity, the humidity ratio. We know from a long line of studies over the years that humidity has a big influence on the survival of certain bacterial and viral communities on surfaces and in the air. So one direction that hospitals might want to target in the future if they're interested in controlling the spread of, say, influenza in the indoor environment is targeting greater humidity control. We had access to this hospital before it became operational, when it was empty. Each of these dots represents a microbial community. The ones that are closer together are more similar to each other. The day the patients and doctors moved in, the microbiome suddenly changed, as represented by these blue dots. The bacteria that people brought in started to dominate this space. But we also found that the microbial communities inhabiting these spaces might be outcompeting hospital-associated pathogens and keeping harmful diseases from spreading. So the traditional kill-all policy may not be appropriate for the next generation of hospitals. So, Pam, introduce yourself. I'm Pam McCall, patient care manager of oncology at University of Chicago Medicine. This is 10 West. So, uh, a bunch of crazy microbiologists come into your hospital ward and start swabbing. What did you expect us to find? I thought we would find a lot of bacteria that would be harmful to the patients and for the staff. So has your opinion of bacteria changed based on our findings? Yes, it has. The findings were amazing to see that the bacteria that we have in the environment, we need in the environment, and it's important and beneficial to the patients. The Hospital Microbiome Project is helping us to map and track the movement of bacteria around this space, from people's hands to bed rails, from floors to shoes. We are using this information to augment the structure and design of buildings and to augment patient care. I can imagine a future where you no longer consider these buildings, these hospitals, to be inanimate, but more living, breathing beings. <laughs>